One other issue that you guys talked about, and that was the border. You've spoken at this event several years in a row. I wanted to get your take because I wanted to see what the audience is going to do. I was really intrigued as I was watching this online as you were there. It was the audience going to change on the issue of immigration reform and border security because the onslaught of illegal immigrants coming across the border into Texas and what it's happening around the country, seeing this debate change very quickly with Democrats like Mayor Adams and the governor of New York and others. Did the audience change in Austin, though, because it's it, go outside, go anywhere in Texas, you can see the difference in how the state's changing because of so many illegal immigrants coming across the border. Were they willing to have a different dialogue this year? Not, not remotely. Unfortunately, left-wing college students live in an ivory tower. These are the same college students that think school choice, there's no need for it, that think the Second Amendment is unnecessary and we should disarm people that, that want to see unlimited abortion on demand because they're being indoctrinated. Look, they're 19, 20-year-olds who are being indoctrinated. So on, on immigration, the, the, their only view is open borders is, is mandated by justice. And so they don't want to hear... The, the people who are hurt, they don't want to hear the suffering, they don't want to hear the death that comes from open borders because it's inconsistent with their political narrative. Take a look at this video, it's interesting. And it's a problem that is man-made. This is one of the important things to say. So if you look at, at press talking points, one of the talking points that you see from the White House is, well, the border is just not solvable. The problem with that is that is objectively false. When Joe Biden came into office, he inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. And this crisis was caused by three specific decisions. Number one, it was caused the first week in office, Biden immediately halted construction of the border wall. Number two, he reinstated the failed policy of catch and release so that when people are apprehended, they're given a court date sometime in the future, they're let go, and the vast majority of them are never seen again. And number three, he pulled out of the incredibly successful Remain in Mexico agreement. Now, what was Remain in Mexico? Remain in Mexico was an international agreement the United States negotiated with Mexico that said that when people cross illegally into Mexico, typically from Central or South America, that they would remain in Mexico while their U.S. asylum case was proceeding. And it worked. It worked incredibly well, so much so that we saw the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. Biden came in his first week in office. He ripped that agreement to shreds. And we right now have the highest rate ever recorded. 7.2 million people have crossed illegally since Biden became president. And it is utterly indefensible. Uh, Want to move on to one, kind of one or two topics before we go to audience questions here. L let's just think about how silent he was it's like let's move on again right don't want to talk about the facts and if you look at the numbers since joe biden took office you have 7.5 million illegal immigrants that have crossed the border including 1.5 million gotaways who escaped border patrol and vanished into the country in friday the, there was a dump of of new data the biden administration announced 232,972 illegal immigrants were encountered at the southern border in august that's the 30th straight month center of the worst border crisis in history and the highest total for that month in Department of Homeland Security history. That is how bad it is. And if you take a look at the graph that was released on Friday by the Border Patrol, Custom Border, this is what it looks like. And I want to get your reaction to it. Now, this is just the encounters. And you can explain the difference for people yeah. between encounters and gotaways. So encounters are where Border Patrol agents actually encounter someone. They stop someone. They turn them in. Uh, a gotaway is they see someone and they take off. So, so they don't actually apprehend them, they, but they know that they are there. They just got away. And let's put the chart back up there. Take a look at August encounters, and then that's the third from the right column. So August of 2020, there were 50,014 encounters. Now, that's a lot, but 2020 was the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. So Who was that, the president then? That, that would be Donald Trump. Just making sure everybody knows that. So 50,000 in yeah. 2020. One year later, August of 2021, 209,840. So it's increased 400%. First year Biden's in office. August of 2022, 204,087. So it stays up 4X where it was under Trump. 
And how about August of 2023? They just released the numbers. 232,972. It's nearly 500% where it was in August of 2020. And if you look at this chart, that same ratio is there every single month, October, November, December, January, February, all the way through, you see numbers that are about a quarter of what they are now, a 4X increase, and that's what happens when you have open border Democrats who empower the cartels and, and, among other things, make billions of dollars for the cartels in human trafficking and drug trafficking, not concerning themselves with the death and suffering and misery that results from it. There's a civil war in the Democratic Party right now over the immigration issue. We're seeing, you know, Mayor Adams come out, the governor of New York come out, and, and it's hard to just overlook what's happening at the border. There was an interesting Fox report that I think put it in perspective for people, and I wanted to make sure we played it in the video pod, and many people that are listening to this right now, they're listening on audio only. You can go watch the video that we're about to do on YouTube, all right, because we're doing this one with video and audio. Go look at it, because this is something that should go viral and people should see. Yep. Take a look at this. I can tell you that early this morning in Eagle Pass, we witnessed one of the largest mass illegal crossings we have ever seen in the last two and a half years of covering our southern border. We'll get right to this video. Take a look at this stunning footage. Border Patrol sources telling us just after midnight, about 2,500 migrants crossed illegally into Eagle Pass. You can see this lengthy line of them stretching from shore to shore in the river. This video perspective coming from the Mexican side of the river in Piedras Negras, one of our contacts over there shooting this video as they essentially bum rushed Eagle Pass last night. You saw that, and there was another video also went viral, and that was a train coming towards yep. America filled with people. And it's like the cartels have figured out, hey, they're not going to stop us. In fact, the more that we send, the, the more likely it is to be successful. We can just mm. bum rush the border, and this administration will not stop us. Yeah, l let's put these, these numbers in context. So as we've discussed on the pod bef before, Mayor Adams in New York has said that, that New York is city is in a crisis. They've had 110,000 illegal immigrants. He says that 110,000 illegal immigrants is destroying New York City. Now, I want to focus on Eagle Pass, where, where if you watch that video, you just saw the people crossing. Eagle Pass is a small town on the southern border on the Rio Grande River. Uh, it has a population of about 28,000 people, so it's a little town. On one single day last week, more than 4,000 illegal immigrants came into Eagle Pass on one day. Now, 4,000 people in a town of 28,000 people is about 14% of the population. About 14% of the population of the city came illegally into Eagle Pass on one day. What would that be in New York City? New York City has a population of about 9 million people. If 14% of New York City came into New York on one day, that would be 1,260,000 people invading New York on a single day. Mayor Adams says 110,000 people over two and a half years is a crisis destroying the city. Well, how would he feel about 1,260,000 people entering the city on a single day? That's what Eagle Pass saw on one day last week. And you know what? They saw thousands more the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And these Democrats do not give a damn. Border Patrol Union put out a very interesting tweet, and this is what they said uh, as they put this out. It said, from September 1st through the 20th, the Biden administration ordered the release of more than 100,000. This the order the release of 100,000 legal border crashers, enough to double the population of cities like Yuma, Arizona. Think about what Biden is doing to this country with his out-of-control border policies. How many millions more? That's not, like, exaggeration. When, the, when they say, Border Patrol Union saying how many millions more, that's a very accurate statement because there are millions. Look, they're at seven and a half million, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Chuck Schumer and Alejandro Mayorkas and every Senate Democrat and just about every congressional Democrat, they want seven and a half million to go to 10 million, to go to 12 million, to go to 15 million. They want as many as possible. And by the way, if you don't believe me that they want as many as possible, Take a look at, at the governor of New York, Governor Hochul, back in 2021, so just two years ago, where she is explicitly inviting as many as possible to come to New York. Take a look. 
So our message to the world is send us your people, send us those who need the, uh, the cloak of comfort that we can demonstrate as New Yorkers with big hearts and open arms, and we'll provide a safe haven, particularly for these Afghan refugees who are so proud that are here. We have already 7,500 Afghans living here already, and we expect to have another 1,800 more. And we send a message from day one, we'll take as many as you want to have us have come to New York State because it's a huge point of pride for us. And we'll support them to build a whole new life. Open arms and big hearts in 2021. Okay, and she also said, we'll take as many as you want to have come to New York. Please come. So that is the approved talking point of left-wingers. Now fast forward to 2023, same governor. Here's what she says this year. It certainly will because about 41% of the people in our shelters today are from Venezuela. They are literally from around the world, uh, West Africa, South and Central America. They're coming from all over, but we have to let the word out that when you come to New York, we're not going to have more hotel rooms. We don't have capacity. So we have to also message properly that we're at our limit. If you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. But the smarter thing is to apply for asylum before you leave your country, and then you'll have a different experience when you arrive. If you're going to leave your country, Senator, go somewhere else. Now, does that we're mean we're at state? our limit? We're yeah. at our limit. We have no more hotel rooms for you. And, and by the way, look at the numbers. So in 2021, she was saying we have 7,500 Afghans, and we expect another 1,800 more. Okay, so if they're talking 7, 8, 9,000, that we're good. The, the, we're, we're good. 110,000. Oh, crap, we're at our limit. We, we said 1,800. We didn't say 110,000. Well, what do you think about 7.5 million? The utter hypocrisy, and mind you, you know, you know what name she didn't say? Joe Biden. Yeah. She didn't say Kamala Harris. She didn't say Chuck Schumer. If New York is at its limit, doesn't New York State have two U.S. senators? Yeah. Isn't one of them the Senate Majority Leader? Charles Schumer, who could do something on who this, could like actually pass do something legislation about it. or introduce and, legislation. And no, not only does he not introduce legislation, he votes against anything to secure the border. He demonizes any effort to secure the border. He embraces the open borders that are destroying New York City. And even the Democrats who are calling it out, they don't dare call out their fellow Democrats. Instead, they blame, as I love, you know, Mayor Adams, who said some madman in Texas, Greg Abbott. Yeah. Um, I'm still I'm still offended that he wasn't talking about me, but <laughs> the hypocrisy is massive because New York's Democrat governor is not saying stop, secure the border, stop the invasion. She's saying, please don't send them to New York. Send them to red states, make other people deal with them so I can continue to virtue signal. By the way, did you notice also in that press interview, it was a little Stepford Wives that that, that, that that both she and the woman interviewing her are wearing the exact same white suit. Yeah. It was just kind of a little freaky looking. I'm not sure what was going on there. I, I love what everybody asked me about. It. Do you really believe there's bias in the media? And I'm like, yes, I really do. Like, I love when I'm traveling. You get it, too, all the time. People come up and they kind of want to antagonize. They're like, there's not biased media. If you were a decent person in the media when she said go somewhere else, any journalist, the initial response would have been, well, well governor? Where else? Where? What is this somewhere else? What is that another state? Are you telling me to go to another country? There was no follow-up no, there on CNN not. at all. No, 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 because there's no response to that. Go somewhere else. What they mean, and actually the Biden White House said that, go to Texas. Send them all to Texas because they hate Texas. And they figure if they invade Texas with enough people, they'll flip it blue. And you know what? If, if, if the cities are bankrupted and if people die and if children are assaulted and if they're drug overdoses, all of that is an acceptable price for their partisan political objective.